directory demo on assemblies. Up until this point, we've been working in part files. That's what all the bottles have been built in. Um, so whenever we have the bottle and the cap, we had two separate bodies, but both in the same file. Uh, when it comes to designing concepts in SOLIDWORKS, this is uh, an efficient workflow. It keeps all of the parts together. It allows the parts to reference each other, um, so no files go missing. When you start to get to more complex products with lots of parts or working with engineers or working on production, it's common to actually separate these two files. The, the bottle and the cap would be their own part file and they would come together in an assembly file. Um, and this demo will cover how to use assemblies and why they're important. Um, it's sufficient to say though that part files, again, when it comes to designing and concepts are good enough. And in fact, again, sometimes better when it comes to organizing computer files. So that said, um, if you wanna follow along in this demo, that would be ideal. The goal is to put a toaster oven together in an assembly using some of the parts we built in the previous class. Um, so files can be downloaded from Box. It's in the Project 2 folder. If you click on Assembly Demo, um, you need these four files. The top one is um, a template file. If you want to go ahead, you can drop that into wherever you have your part template. Um, and that way you don't have to bother setting up the lighting or the background. Um, it's similar to what we did on day two, but should just save you some time. Um, so once you have those files downloaded, we can go ahead and open um, the toaster oven. So P2 toaster. So this is the main part of the assembly. You'll notice that this one actually does have multiple bodies in here. Again, we're kind of working at a concept stage. If this was for if this was production, each of these bodies would be their own part file. Um, but this will be again the main file that we're attaching all the other files to. Uh, so I would also go ahead and open up um, the rack P2 rack. And here you can see here's a separate file that we're gonna then put into the toaster oven using the assembly. Once you have these two files open, you can go ahead and go to File, New, and here's where hopefully if you dropped the assembly template into your, wherever your part template is, you should see SMW here. Um, if not, if you click on Novice, if you just select the standard assembly, you can follow along this demo just fine. Again, this just has better lighting and background. So I'm gonna select that and click OK. And so now we are in, uh, creating again a new file in as an assembly. Um, immediately when you create this file, it, this property manager dialog pops up asking, hey, what part do you wanna start with? Um, and because both of these are open, uh, they pop up as suggested parts to use. If you wanna use a part that's not open or if you skip the step of opening the toaster, by clicking Browse, you can then find files to add to this list here. Um, so we can go ahead and click on the toaster, highlight it, and just go ahead and click the checkbox. And this will drop the toaster into our assembly. Uh, looking at our window here, you'll notice that it pretty much looks the same. Um, unfortunately, when I exported my settings, I left some of these toolbars up here. I didn't check my assembly settings. Um, so if it looks kind of busy, don't be overwhelmed. These are just all the same features that we're familiar with, just as smaller icons. Um, if they bother you, you can always like click on these dots here and, and drag this out and then just close them. Because really all we need is um, just our command manager here that's at the top. Again, this should look more familiar to what you're used to. The nice thing with the command manager is the icons are bigger and they have some text underneath, which I think is helpful for learning SOLIDWORKS. So again, that's a little bit of a tour of what we're looking at. Um, so an assembly, the best way to think about it is it's basically a file that just puts other part files together. Um, an analogy I use is like InDesign. So think of it as an assembly is kind of like an InDesign document 
where the part files are like images that are placed into the InDesign template um, or the InDesign file. So an assembly file points to part files. So in this case, we've dropped the toaster and the assembly is pointing to it. You can navigate just the same way as you would in a part file. The same hotkeys work. So if we want to hide all of these sketches in the planes, if you hit Alt V or Option V for a Mac, you'll hide all that mess. Um, all right, so we want to add more parts to this. Uh, and you'll notice that dialog box that popped up in the beginning is gone. So in order to bring that back up, you go up to the top, click on Insert, Component, and then Existing Part Assembly. This brings back up the dialog box that we saw when we created the assembly file. Um, one thing I like to do is hit this pin at the top. This prevents this window from disappearing when you drop things in. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to add the rack right now. If you recall, when we added the toaster, we selected it and hit check. This time we're going to use a different option. We're going to click on the rack and then we're going to hover into our window viewer here where we see the toaster. Um, you should see a little like Tetris piece by your mouse and just click anywhere and you'll notice it drops the rack in. Um, if you did not check the pin, this window would disappear. You'd have to go back to tools um, or sorry, insert component existing part file. Uh, but by hitting this pin, it, it keeps this open. Um, now we want to add other files. So like I said, if it's not open, you have to click browse. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we want to add some heating elements to our toaster. So that's where we'll select P2 heater and click open. And now you'll notice it adds it to the list. And just like we added with the rack, you can click on P2 heater and just click somewhere in the window. Um, the toaster has two heating elements, one above and one below. So once you click once, you can click again and it will add another element. You could just keep clicking if you wanted and copying parts in that way. Um, so yeah, this is enough to get started for now. You can go ahead and click the checkbox and that will make the property dialog go away. And so now you should notice a couple things with these parts. If you click on the toaster and try and drag it, it won't move. But if you click on the rack and the heating elements and drag them around, they will move within the window. Um, there's a couple reasons for that. One, it's the method in which we added them. The toaster, if you recall, we selected it and clicked the check mark. It dropped it right in the middle of the file. It basically aligned the origin of the toaster to the origin of the assembly. Or another way to state that is the front plane of the toaster and the front plane of the assembly are aligned as are the right and top planes. Um, so typically when you click the check mark, it drops it in and aligns the origins together. Um, when you click in the window, it allows you to move them and drag them. So just floating around, we want to have them arranged properly within the toaster. Um, and the way we do that is using a new feature. It's called mate and the icon is a paper clip. Um, a good way to think about mates is similar to the rules that we would apply to sketches where it would give relationships uh, to the sketch entities, such as having a vertice be coincident to the origin or two lines that are parallel to each other. Um, but in this instance, it's applying it to parts. Uh, these rules can apply to any aspect of the part, such as a face, um, or it can be a vertice, such as where this line meets this edge. Um, or it can even be aspects within the part, such as planes, um, which you can select by expanding the tree on the side here and using, for example, this right plane uh, to mate with another feature on the toaster. Um, so let's go ahead and get some of these parts located. We'll start with the rack. So go ahead and click on the mate icon. It brings up the property dialog box. Um, and so here it's asking us, hey, what features do you want us to apply the rule to? So again, if you don't see this tree on the right, you just click on the triangle. It should drop this down. We're going to place the rack. And what we want is we want the middle plane of the rack, which in this case is the right plane, to be in the middle of this opening. And in the toaster, you'll notice that there is a plane here. It's below these ones. It's called door mid plane. And if you go ahead and click on that, you'll notice that the rack uh, slides over and is aligned in position. Um, if we just click this checkbox, we exit. It applies the mate and we exit out of the 
property dialog. In fact, I'm sorry, I think I clicked that twice. If we now just take a top view, you'll notice that if you try and drag the rack to the left and the right, it will slide only backwards and forwards because it, is, it has now been constrained from left to right. It can still move up and down and front and back, but it has been constrained left and right. So the next thing we want to do is constrain the rack further. Um, you'll notice there is kind of a channel here for it to slide in. So we can go ahead and click back on the mate icon. And once again, it's asking us where we, what we want the rules to be applied to. So in this instance, we're going to click on the face inside the channel and click on uh, the wire. And you'll notice that SOLIDWORKS um, automatically makes an assumption as to the best mate of what you want. So in this case, it, it picks tangency as um, a logical mate. Um, so the two faces are now touching and have a tangent relationship to each other. And that's because this is a cylinder mating to a flat face, so they would have a relationship of, tan of tangent. Um, some other options are like distance. You can tell it to be a certain uh, distance away. Um, but these options that are grayed out just don't work because um, like, you can't have a coincident mate from a round face to a flat face. There's no point for it to be coincident to. So SOLIDWORKS does some of that stuff automatically for us. Um, for some of you, you may notice like your rack is below the line. Um, maybe if it was below the face to begin with, it would snap below. You simply just toggle these two icons and it, it, it flips that mate, whether it's like above or below uh, the cylinder. So once that's done, you can go ahead and click check and that applies the mate. You'll notice it leaves the mate dialog open to continually add mates. Um, but again, for this instance, we're just gonna exit out. And now you'll notice we have a rack that slides um, in its channel and can be placed in position. Just like a sketch, you don't have to over-define it. Uh, it's not a bad thing that this rack slides. In fact, there's times where you want it to slide, so as you set up renders, you can just easily move parts. Um, but let's just go ahead and tuck it kind of to the back, make sure it's not like bleeding into that face, and just kind of set it there, and uh, we can leave it. So next up, we're gonna put these heating elements in place. Uh, I forgot to mention um, that Another good reason to use assemblies is sometimes you'll be provided internal components uh, by your client or by an engineer or another designer. And this is, again, where assemblies are handy because then you don't have to, you know, rebuild this kind of technical um, working component. It can be provided to you. So you can build your part, such as the toaster, and then you can drop in any kind of internal guts into it using an assembly. So that's another reason why assemblies are better than part files. Um, so yeah, so let's go ahead and get these heating elements where they belong. Once again, we click on the mate dialog. Um, this time we'll use some different options. So let's click on this face and we want this face to be aligned with the internal wall over here. So we'll go ahead and click on this and you'll notice again, it goes over and snaps. Once again, SOLIDWORKS makes an assumption. It makes the faces coincident. If I were to click perpendicular, um, which I can, you'll notice it's gonna stand that heating element up on its side. It's kind of silly, but again, coincident is the right assumption SOLIDWORKS made, and that's indeed what we want. So now we'll go ahead and click the checkbox. It will add that mate. You'll notice there's a little tab in here for this to sit on top of, so we can click the bottom face, angle it, and click the top face. If for some reason you can't see the top face, you can always eg uh, exit out and kind of move the part till you can see it. Once again, it snaps up. So same. So for example, here's a situation where I can't see the face that I want to mate to this back here. So I'll go ahead and exit out of my mate dialog. I'll drag this forward so that I can see the back face here. Um, and now once again, click on mate, click on this face, rotate my view and go ahead and click on this back face. And now it snaps our heating element into position. We can do this again with this other part. Um, sometimes the mate order does matter in the sense that your life can be made easier or harder based on what you can and cannot see. Um, 
like we just saw previously. Sometimes you have other options to make too. So I could select this other tab here. You're basically just trying to use it to get components in the right place. There's no right or wrong way to go about it. Just whatever is the most efficient. Here you'll, I'll show an option here. We could go to a ver vertice. It doesn't have to be the whole face. That will put it in position. And great, now we have the guts of the toaster um, right in place where we want them. You'll notice that um, this toaster door is open. I did that so that we could easily access the inside. Um, it's a command that we haven't talked about yet. Um, but if you notice here, what the assembly tree looks like is it shows all the different parts, but you can expand them to see the tree um, of the part that's created. So again, the door's open. If you want to close it, if you expand the toaster tree, it's all the way at the bottom. It's labeled as door open. If you right click on that and look and find the icon that's a yellow box and a gray box with an arrow, the word should say suppress. If you click that, it turns the command to gray. It doesn't delete it, but it just kind of turns it off. And you'll notice that the door um, is now closed. Now we have our toaster with internal components. The next step is to insert the handle, knobs, and feet from Wednesday's class. So once again, we can go ahead and hit insert components. Um, we'll pin this so it doesn't disappear. And now let's browse for the files that you created in class. Um, so once again, we want our feet, the handle, the knob. And just like before, so we have one handle, so we click on this, selecting it, it's highlighted in blue, we click in our viewing window here, we then click on the knob, we have two of these, that's what these two holes are for, so we click twice. Now with the feet, there are four spots, but I'll show you a new trick where you don't have to place each one, you can in fact mirror items within the assembly. So we're going to go ahead and we're just going to place one foot into the assembly for now. Um, so once you have the part files, again, you can click check and that will take away the property dialog. Um, let's start with the handle. So simply we just want this to be coincident to the door. So I can select this face. Uh, you don't always have to start by clicking on the mate icon. You could select the face, hold down control and select so now we have two faces selected. They should both be highlighted in blue. And now if I click mate, it should jump the handle. And again, SolidWorks makes an assumption correctly that we want it to be coincident. And we can go ahead and click the check mark. Um, it would be nice for the handle to be centered on the door. So once again, just like we did with the rack, we can find our handle file. If, again, if you don't see the tree here, it's the triangle at the top. We can expand the handle part file click on that right plane, and then again on the toaster, we're looking not for the right plane because that's the exact center of the toaster body, we're looking for the door mid plane because we want the handle to be centered on the door, not the overall toaster. Um, and go ahead and click check. You should see that jump over. Um, now you'll notice it's floating up here. We could, if you wanted, use like a distance mate. So sometimes what I'll do is like I'll exit out of the mate dialog drag this to a position where it looks about right. Um, you know, sometimes it's okay, just like the rack, you know, it still could slide backwards and forwards. If the handle can slide up and down, that's okay. Um, it all, all depends on how much setup you're trying to do, whether it's just for a rendering or whether you're sharing the file with someone, that all kind of dictates how um, defined the mate should be. So in my opinion, this is enough for the handle. But if you wanted to have it be a little bit tighter or have the door be able to open and have the handle not jump around, um, you could go ahead and in your tree, find your handle file, select the front plane, click on mates. And now you'll notice that the front plane is preloaded into our box here. And now we can find a face on the top of the door and click on this. 
And here we don't want it to be coincident because we don't want our handle all the way at the top. We actually want it to be a distance mate. So it looks like about one inch down from the top. Uh, looks about right for this handle. Um, wherever you positioned it, it will remember where that distance was before it jumped it. So if you visually place the handle, click on mate from the center, you know, the front plane to the top of the door and click back on this distance icon, it will snap it back to where it was before it moved it. Um, but in this case, I'm typing in a fresh value of one inch and we're gonna go ahead and click check. And now our handle is not, is not movable. Um, with the mate property still open, we can go ahead and do the knobs. Um, so we extruded these sprues about a quarter of an inch and this hole is 0.2 inches deep, so that gives us a nice like short gap between the face of the knob and this front face. So we're gonna select this back face here and select the base of this sprue or boss. And now those are in plane. Um, the next mate we're gonna make is we're gonna select on this face and we're gonna select this face here. And here you'll notice that we're now using a new rule. Again, SolidWorks is making a correct assumption um, where it's taking these two cylinders and making them concentric to each other. This means that they are al aligned about their center axis. Um, there's a lot of options here, but this is the right one that we wanna use. So we're gonna go ahead and click that checkbox. Now here's the nice thing with the way we have set this up is the knob can now spin. So we can change our indicator. Again, if you're setting up a render, it makes this really easy um, to maybe like put in an action shot or, or have it you know, feel real. Um, the concentric keeps it centered about that the hole in the toaster and that back face prevents it from sliding forwards and backwards. So it's completely constrained except with the ability to spin. Um, and we can go ahead and do that with the other knob. There are more efficient ways to mate. So here's one example, I believe, that should work. So for example, if you want to replace those two mates with just one, you can go ahead and click on the edge of this cylinder here. And on the inside here, click on this edge. So now they have a relationship of coincidence. The two edges are touching each other, but it should have a similar effect because um, because we have selected a more finite or a more defined aspect of the knob, an edge as opposed to a face, so think of it as like a line as opposed to a plane, um, it defines our goal a little bit quicker. Um, and so, for example, the face on this first mate that we did, all it cares about is the flatness of the face. It doesn't care that it's a circle. It could be a square. It would work the same way. And it just kind of made the two faces on top of each other. Um, in this instance, because we picked an edge, not only does it care, care about uh, the plane that the edge exists on, it cares that it is a circle. And since we're mating a circle to a circle, um, maybe it's a bit confusing, but it did set it to be coincident. It is essentially setting, setting them to be concentric to each other and on top of each other. So they're, So it's kind of like the two circles are coincident. They exist identical on top of each other, and that allows us to more efficiently um, mate this part. So there's, again, different paths, the same end goal. There's no right or wrong way. Um, it, it all just comes down to preference and knowledge and whatever um, is most efficient for your workflow. Um, so yeah, we now have the handles and the knobs on there. Last but not least, we're gonna go ahead and drop the feet in. If you like that edge technique, you can do the exact same thing. Um, it doesn't have to be the back edge. You could, for example, select this edge so again, the edge, it cares about the shape, not just the, the face of the plane. Um, if we're selecting this inner edge at the base of the cylinder where it meets the foot, we can go ahead and select the same edge that we want it to make to here and click that checkbox. So next, now we have our parts mated to our toaster, but we'll no you notice we only have one foot and I'll show you how to pattern this so that we don't have to manually place the other three in there. On the assembly tab in our command manager, there's a feature here right next to mate. It says linear component pattern. Uh, if you click the arrow below it, there's other options. Some of these may look familiar to 
feature commands um, in a part file, and they are similar. Uh, the one we want here is mirror components. So we're going to go ahead and click on that. So again, it's the drop down menu beneath linear component pattern. Click on mirror components. Um, here it's asking us in the property manager, hey, what plane do you want to mirror about? The first one we'll go about is the right plane. And now it's asking us what components you want to mirror. We're going to go ahead and select the foot. And then we will just click the checkbox. And now it drops the foot on the other side. And we'll do the exact same thing for the back. So again, drop down here, mirror components. This time we're going to select the front plane. And now we're going to select the two feet. And once again, they pop up down here. We're going to click the check. And there we have it. Our toaster has all the components and looks like a real appliance. Um, that's the, that was our goal, essentially, was to get to this point. But let's talk a little bit more about assemblies and how they're used. So for project two, um, the requirement is to have three different families of handles, knobs, and feet. Um, so this is another good way to use assemblies, where you might have the main, I guess in this instance, the main appliance uh, with its guts provided by the engineer. And then maybe you might have several different concept families where you're doing, you know, you're designing just a handle or just a knob. Um, that's very common uh, in design is you may not, especially early on in your career, you may not be handed the full toaster to design. You might be working on a team. The work will be divided up and, you know, you may be spending two weeks on handle concepts, trying to match the aesthetic of the rest of the body and, and looking at different options on materials and grip. So this is another good way to uh, use assemblies. Um, it is important to remember that you are in assembly world in SOLIDWORKS. Uh, last semester, there was some confusion where students started to like apply fillets in assemblies. Um, this is just something you know that you want to avoid, right? If I go ahead and click on this edge and hover and click on this fillet, it adds the fillet here in the assembly tree and it's just kind of confusing and it's, it's really not best practice. Again, an assembly is, is used for pointing to files. It's not used for editing files. Um, so please try not to make that mistake. Uh, you will lose points if I see feature commands on here that aren't assembly commands. Um, so these mirror components are, are assembly commands. Um, that fillet was a feature command. If you do want to make some edits, so for example, you may want to look at the handle and make adjustments in relationship to everything around it. You can always right click on this and go up to here where it says edit part. Um, of course, it's asking me to save. I totally forgot to do that. So let's go ahead and do that. File, save as. This is a new file type. It's an assembly. Um, so I'm going to call this P2 toaster assembly. P2, my initials, toaster assembly. Um, that pop-up. When you save an assembly, it saves all the components that are in there as well. So just be aware of that. Um, again, it's kind of it's pointing to those files. Uh, just like again, think of the assembly as an InDesign document that's pointing to maybe Illustrator files or um, Photoshop files that it's referencing. So when you save the entire do document, it saves the files it's pointing to as well. It's just how SolidWorks is. Um, so again, now that we have our file saved, let's say we want to edit the handle. If you right click on this um, and go to edit part, you'll notice that it makes everything else transparent, grays it out. And now we can, it highlights this blue. You'll also notice some other things like that are, might be familiar. So in sketch world in a part, you have a little icon up here. This is like part edit world with an assembly, so it has this kind of icon up here. And now, for example, if we wanted to change this based on what we see, you know, let's say that it, we wanted it wider on the door, we can go ahead to our master sketch, edit this, and make it, you know, adjust this width to maybe match the width of the door. Or again, if that's 
looking too long, then maybe knock it back down to, you know, let's say nine inches. Um, now we can e exit the sketch. You can see the handle because we had it built in such a way with a master sketch. Uh, we have our Jenga tower set up well that it rebuilds. And now we can exit edit part mode. And now we have a massive handle on our toaster. So it is possible to edit parts in the assembly. Again, just remember to right click on the part first and click on edit part to go into that kind of upside down, you know, to use the Stranger Things analogy. You want to go to that separate level to edit that. You don't want to edit it within, within the assembly. Um, so if I go back to my InDesign analogy of having the the file point to multiple parts. Um, the, so the posit, to recap the positive things of assemblies, they allow you to drop in parts that other people have made, such as engineers providing component guts. They allow you to make different component families to one larger part product. So again, in this case, a toaster with maybe different handle options or different knob options. Um, and allow you to do some things with mates, like having knobs rotate. Those are the benefits of an assembly. They're also a little bit more formal. Engineers like to use them. And again, when you go into production, they keep things better organized than a part file with multiple bodies. The negative of an assembly, especially when it comes to working on a concept, is now you have multiple parts um, ma making up one concept, essentially. Um, and this can be complicated sometimes working on a team if parts go missing. So for example, if like, you know, I change the name of the handle and I reopen the assembly, the assembly will give me an error saying it can't find it. Or here's a common school example. The assembly file will be uploaded onto Box, but none of these part files will be uploaded to Box. When I open the assembly, it tells me the part files can't be found. Um, so again, if we go to our InDesign analogy, it's like a presentation file that's pointing to the raw documents um, elsewhere. It is important to package those raw documents with the assembly file to make sure that when it opens it up, SOLIDWORKS can find the parts and we can then um, you know, see, see the complete toaster put together. The most foolproof way to save against this is to go to file and there's an option here called pack and go this is just like packaging an into indesign file and this will be handy for turning in project two um, to make sure you don't miss any of these files when you upload a box um, it brings up this property um, and it gives you options you can either save it to a folder or save it to a zip file if you click on browse you can rename you know, name the zip file. So for example, P2 and W toaster SM and click save. You can add prefixes and suffixes automatically if you want, you don't need to. But now if I go ahead and click save, it will take all these files. If I minimize this, you can see it has it packaged onto my desktop. So that pretty much covers it for assemblies. Uh, Homework for Wednesday is to have this assembled and complete uh, to, and ready to show me. Um, I can answer any questions in class then, or if you have any questions before, you can feel free to email me. I'll see you all on Wednesday.